Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing a deep dive into the darkest corners of TikTok to uncover some of the most creepiest and most bizarre videos floating around the internet. All right, grab your drink of choice, grab your popcorn, turn the lights down low, grab your blanket, because we're about to dive down the creepy, bizarre world of TikTok. Let's get it. Yo, fake or cap, or does that house need an exorcist or a um, paranormal cleanse? What are your thoughts? I'm just um, like adjusting the needle a little bit, and yeah, we'll, we'll let that essential dry for a couple minutes so we don't get it in the box. What kind of zing do you get? Yeah, that's, 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 yeah, Fake or cap? Let me know. I am dreaming. This is me sleepwalking. I remember this one, so I'm gonna break it down. It's 4.37 in the morning. I am dreaming that there is something dripping down onto my partner, Kenny, and I have to like protect him. I <laughs> take away all of his covers and he's still very sweet. And he starts validating me and asking me questions. It's juice or attack. And he knows in order for me to pop out of it, he has to turn the light on. Now watch me. Watch my face. Okay, now watch it again. I'm in it. I'm in the dream. He turns the light on, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm trying to turn it off. I can do her. Maybe I'm going to I was trying to make sure that she was... Sometimes 
What are you doing? <laughs> and this scene right here with the little boy about to go use the bathroom and this uh treasure uh chess uh, i guess i guess his playpen i used to sleepwalk and um that's because my house used to be haunted i'll let's keep diving down this rabbit hole and i'll share my paranormal encounters with you She's really freaking me out. She keeps shouting about this screaming man on the roof. <gasps> Zara? <gasps> oh my god. Zara, get down. Oh my god. <gasps> Where did she go? Oh, oh no, she didn't fall. She didn't fall, did she? Yo, that's definitely Cap, but that made me jump twice. Yo, my heart came out my chest. I don't know about you. <laughs> They stopped. Let's finally try to get some sleep now. Okay. That's Stray Cat, right there. I'm still a bit sh We have captured one of the most scariest videos ever today. I'm still a bit shaken. Um, this is what my dad's camera caught of my reaction. Dad? Dad. Oh my god. Dad? Dad! <laughs> and this is what my camera caught of my dad. Hey. You won't stay on the run about. What hell is the run about? A really bad one for me. Where is it? Oh, I know, I'm ready to do it. Hey, Yes, you have. You just shouted, get out. I haven't. And your face looks so different. It's gone now. What are you doing? Why have you just done that? I haven't done anything. 
Things are all over the floor. I ain't touching. Your face looks so different. What the f did you just do? I don't know. I just had a massive headache. That's all I remember. I had my head down and I had a headache. And then you started screaming. Why did you, you're gonna have to watch that back. You didn't. You didn't look yourself. I felt weird. I felt like a bit out of body. Oh man. my god! You frightened the death out of me when you said. Felt like kind of woke me up. If you know what I mean. Oh. Honestly, you. I was like, hello, hello, and then you just screamed I don't it out. Remember and any of that? That just fell off the table. I remember you asking me if I was okay. That was it. And then you screamed. God. Giving myself a now. Put your hand there. I can see him shaking from here. I got my glasses on. What do you mean, dude? I was a really cold and I was like a splitting headache, like a migraine type thing. Well, I felt ill in the other ear as well. I feel sick now. You don't, re you don't remember that at all? No, I don't remember you. shouting. No, I remember you shouting. We probably better stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch it back. I'll be on that camera. Oh, my God. This man was walking back from fishing when he captured this on video. Yo, what the? What the? Bro, there's nobody in here. Yo, <laughs> what y'all think? Fake or cap? Jesus Christ. Okay guys, well that's two. Room in the ceiling are requested. Okay guys, well that's two. Room in the ceiling are requested. And that's the third. Any more? And what came through the portals with these three crosses?
Personally, I do personally believe that uh, portals do exist, but this video, I don't know. What are your thoughts, fake or cap? And what are your thoughts on portals? I'll tell you, I saw something right here. But it's inside now. Tap it on the window out. There. Yeah. Top window. Yeah. That's. Bottom window. Bottom window. Yeah. How does his face look like? Oh, man, it disappeared. Bottom window. How does his face look like? Oh, man, it disappeared. Top window. Right. Oh, my God. The hell is it going to zoom in on this? Gone. Bottom window. Oh, what the hell what? is going on? Is it going through the floor or something? It's gone through the wall. Did you see it? Something was in the closet, right? Let's look at that part again. Let's see. Yeah, we can see it. No. No. Bailey, I'm home alone, Bailey. and I can hear myself saying Bailey, my own name. Oh my god. Hello? Hayley? Hayley, help me. Help us. Dad? Turn around. Mum? What is going on? Hello? Hello? Oh. Hell, you see me put that there. What the hell is going on? In here. Help us, Kaylee, help me. Oh my god. I'm here for you. Kaylee, here. We need your help. Please, help us. This house was haunted. Tell me what's the creepiest experience you ever had in your life and why you still think about that moment. 
For the last 20 years, I used to think my grandmother's house was haunted. If you remember my old account, you know I told this story before, but since this is a new account, here it goes. My cousin and I would always go to Pittsburgh to visit my grandma's house in the summertime. Now, we would always sleep in this room down the hallway from her creepy doll room. This doll room had porcelain dolls and red carpet, and it projected its own energy. Now, remember, there was this episode of So Weird on Disney Channel, and that show was creepy alone, and it freaked me out where I was like, I don't want to go to the bathroom because something's going to be out there. So, I had to go to the bathroom, and there was something out there standing in front of the doll room. It was this shadowy figure. I ended up running back to the room and hiding under the blanket. I don't even think I wanted to use the bathroom at that point. Now, fast forward to March of 2020, I had this very vivid dream where I was in my grandmother's house. In this dream, I was standing in the exact same spot as that shadowy figure, watching my younger self run from the bathroom to the other room. And then I woke up. The creepiest moment of my life is when I was around eight. We lived in New York, um, you know, in the middle of Manhattan. My cousin brought home a Ouija board. At that time, we were not believers of the Christian faith, so we thought it, it was just a game. It was in the 1990s. If those of you who could remember, you could buy the Ouija board at any store. And I believe you still buy it now. But anyways, my family of 10 and I, you know, we lived in a small apartment. Three bedrooms, one bathroom. And in the boys' room, there was four of us. In the girls' room, there was four. And in our mom's and dad's room, there was two of them plus the baby. That's 10, 11, okay, 11 of us. So we would get together and play with the Ouija board, you know, often. Um, the Ouija board, I guess the spirit entity, fell in love with my mother. It would constantly say, I love you. I can't wait to be alone with you. Um, and at that point, we started getting creeped out because weird things started happening in the night. I started sleepwalking. And I am very sensitive to the spirit. I found this on later in life. After I found out what I did was open a gateway, um, a portal into my life by tangling with the dark arts. But anyway, so my house is haunted. Um, I'm sleepwalking. You know, beds are shaking. There's odors in the house of uh, alcohol and just, you know, horrid smells uh the bathroom lights going on and off doors are shutting um opening closing by itself at this time we're all scared now 11 of us is now sleeping in the master bedroom on the floor in the beds because we're all so scared this went on for about months and we still couldn't figure it out so they finally burned the ouija board big mistake when they burned the Ouija board, the smoke was blue. And my dad said he could hear like crackling and screams coming from it. He went downstairs in the park right across the street because we lived in the projects, right? And he burned that Ouija board. The next day, um, we uh, went to a church and we realized that we were into the dark arts. At that time, we kept participating in church and... We also learned how to do spiritual warfare to combat the gateway that we open in our lives. Um, witchcraft, folks, it's real. It does open uh, doorways, especially especially the Ouija board, tarot card reading, horoscopes, uh, numer numerology, and the list can go on. Be careful what you're diving into. You don't want to open those portals or those pathways into your life. Very, very scary times. All right. Now we're about to dive into sleep paralysis. Let's get it. Anytime you have sleep paralysis is because a demon is trying to attack you. Chill. I hope this isn't real, oh, but it's scary. what is it? This guy is in sleep paralysis and he's been having sleep paralysis so many times throughout the week. So he decides I'm gonna get one of those cameras that can see beyond the cameras thermal. that can thermal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will be able to show if anything's there, trying to catch a ghost okay. or whatever. He's like it always feels like somebody's pressing on my chest. Usually that's what people feel whenever mm. they have it. Paralysis. Something of a certain each and every one of you has experienced yo. at least you once. See, you see it? Yo, yo, yo. So, so you can see his chest moving. 
as you can see, and then there's there's, there's like oh, there's there like a figure. It's like a translucent figure, and it's right on top of his chest, and it's pushing him, and then he wakes up after. Oh, that's crazy. And then walks away, and then that's when he wakes up. I dated a guy once who used to have really bad sleep paralysis. No. Yes, and he told me, and everybody who has sleep paralysis or or takes like Nyquil or something sees the scary man in a hat. You know who I'm talking about? The Babadook? About? Basically, the fucking Babadook. He My would dad, I'm well. Chip, we're on a first name basis. His name's Rob. He would ask me to wake him up if I saw him in sleep paralysis. He was like, it's really terrifying for me. Like, please wake me up. So it would scare the fuck out of me. And I'd wake him up, and then he, we'd cuddle, and it would be normal, and I'd feel really bad. I'd, like, give him a little hug. God, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Can I just mm, ick out? Why? Because he has sleep paralysis? I, c I can't hang. Well, guess what happened next? I got sleep paralysis for the first time in my entire life. Is it contagious? Is it contagious? Is there a demon in your bedroom? I don't know. But all of a sudden, I was par paralyzed. And I, there was I was demon. paralyzed. I was paralyzed. <laughs> there was a demon. And it was so scary, like the scariest nightmare ever. And he woke me up. He's like, oh, my God, did it happen to you? And I was like, you need to stage. You need to move out. You need to burn the house. No, that's grounds for you. Y'all know how reality is filled with a bunch of messages, but it's up to us to decode it. Well, one of the messages that we've been decoding wrong is sleep paralysis. Y'all always tell you that it's bad, just pause and read. They say it's bad because in these moments of sleep paralysis, you temporarily don't have the ability to move or speak in the physical room. I want to emphasize in the physical room. But in reality, I'm here to tell y'all today that if you're able to go undergo sleep paralysis, you actually have a gift. Now, when I had my very first experience, y'all know I'm a very analytical person, so I researched it to the T. And what I learned is that in order to make yourself undergo sleep paralysis, you must be in a very sleepy state. And that's because you're about to enter two realms at one time. Sleep paralysis is basically the bridge between being woke in real life and the bridge between DMT being produced in your brain you're actually dreaming. During the moments of sleep paralysis where you have the inability to speak, it's, instead of being fearful, if you were to accept it, the next step would be astral projection. So you could perfect this. Okay, I get what she's saying. And a lot of what she's saying is correct. For those who practice astral projection. Five, six years ago, um, my closest astral projection that I got to was I was going to different dimensions. <laughs> Follow me here, okay? I would be in the middle of my sleep, um, about to fall asleep. And then I would enter this dream state. And then I feel my body floating. The bed is spinning. You know, I feel this. I mean, it's not literally spinning, but I feel like it is spinning. My body's lifting and I'm going into like a purple aura or like a rainbow aura. And the whole bed is lifting with me while spinning. My whole spirit and my body's moving with the bed up. That was the closest I've gotten to any of this astral projection. But what are your thoughts on that experience? Have you had similar and, and experiences? And we trying to like, I got a serious question for y'all. When we going to sleep and we not actually sleep yet, and we trying to like sit there until our body actually takes us to sleep, do you not know that we're in a spiritual lobby waiting to be spawned into a match, into one of our lucid dreams, into where we finna go astrally? I need that's gonna mess y'all head up. When you go to sleep, some people they have this thing called a uh, sleep paralysis. Have you ever had that before? You feel like something's coming, a weight is on you and you can't move and you can't talk. So you feel these things and sometimes you see nightmares and you feel like a thrill and there's creatures and things like that. So these are actually the shaitan, the jinns. Do they harm you? No. Don't worry about it. It does not harm you. They just like to scare you. And the shaitan always likes to put fear because with fear there is vulnerability. So don't be afraid. And if you do have that and you wake up, just go like this. Act like you're spitting towards that direction three times and say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan, the outcast. Three times, turn to the other side. And so if you're on the right, turn to the left, left turn to the right. And just put your hands in like this and recite the three points. And Ayatul Kursi. You may be wondering why I do this clip in there. It's to show you that it's an occurrence that happens in any faith and religion. And and my faith, the Christian faith, the way that I found that I've combated sleep paralysis is by citing Psalms 91 every night before I go to bed. And also my sleep paralysis 
was so bad, I have to still sleep with uh the Bible playing, you know, with music. Like, you know, some people sleep with music. I sleep with the Bible playing because if I don't, I have that pressure on my chest. I can't breathe and I feel like something's pushing me to the bed or sitting or like climbing on top of me. It's scary, scary, scary. I remember one time as a kid, I said, God, let me see what's push, what's holding me. My head was able to turn. I was l sleeping on my belly and my face was on the pillow like this. And then I said, let me open my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I saw black spirits circling my bed, running so fast, so fast, so fast. And with everything in me, I screamed out, Jesus, Jesus. And then everything stopped. Sleep paralysis is real. Spiritual warfare, demons, entities, jinns, they're all real. And the only way to combat, the only way to combat the spiritual is by using spiritual tools, which is uh, the Bible and also strong faith. All right, we'll do a different podcast on spiritual warfare, the scriptures that goes along with it that you need, the arm of God, Ephesians 4, 6, Psalms 27, Psalms 23, Psalms 91, um, you know, the book of Enoch also teaches us how to combat this, but there's also witchcraft in there if you don't know what you're doing in the book of Enoch, if you're practicing, you know, occultic things, um, whole different podcasts. Let's keep diving. Sleep paralysis is actually a gift. So if you've ever woken up in the middle of the night or during a nap and you cannot move, you can't really breathe, like a demon is sitting on your chest, you're hallucinating, maybe seeing witches or demons or shadow people, there's actually a way to unlock this for you. And it's a gateway to astral projection and a lot of other cool stuff. So there's an interview by Joey Badass about sleep paralysis is the gateway to astral projection. This changed my life. And this knowledge is, a, it takes some work. Like, it's not like you're going to hear this and automatically it'll switch. I mean, it actually could. But you also have to train your brain. So in the video, he goes on to say that when you have sleep paralysis, you might see a witch lady or demon lady. You can't move. You're frozen, right? You feel like you might be dying. And then he goes on to say, it's actually a gift. And here's why. So he says, you know what the next step is? The next step is after you can't move or can't breathe, you relax into it. You calm down. And all of a sudden, you're out of your body. And crazy enough, just to give you guys some proof, I'm plagued with sleep paralysis. And after I watched this video, coincidentally, I was going to the Monroe Institute two years ago to learn the gateway process, which is where they train your consciousness. You can go out of your body. And I had never done that. I had sleep paralysis on the plane going to the Monroe Institute. I relaxed into it. And as I relaxed, I came out of my body like I was a mist. It, and then I knew that my body was back there and I started to think, oh my God, I'm in a plane. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get lost. Like I can't be doing this. And then I went back into my body. It's also really funny because in this video, when he talks about how you move out of your body in sleep paralysis and that it's not a demonic thing, that we just think it's a demonic thing because our minds play tricks on us, which basically when you have sleep paralysis and you're in that realm of the mind or that dream state, your beliefs hold a lot in what you see. So if you think it's going to be a demonic or bad experience, it will be. Or your mind will go into survival mode and panic. So you see some of those things. But the second, I guess, you train your brain to not be scared, which is hard, you can have these amazing experiences. And he chuckles and he goes, oh, the government definitely doesn't want you to know that. Which, And I've actually heard, I'm not even being cray cray right now, that maybe I am, but the government does have a list and follows people who astral project. If that's true, that's cool. And it means we're onto something. He then laughs and talks about how he literally at any time he wants can just like fly off his balcony and do what's called remote viewing. So this guy, this is one of many, Russell Targ was part of the Stargate program, I think, the CIA, and wrote a book about remote viewing. He is a legend. Uh, one of the many books is called A Limitless Mind, A Guide to Remote Viewing and Transformation of Consciousness. In this, basically he talks about remote viewing and how you can view what this guy says too. When you astral project, you can go remote view your friend Jamie in bed, or you can go fly above your town and see what's going on. Like, these are real things. People in the government were trained to do it. There's a movie called Men Who Stare at Goats that's about the government program with George Clooney, I think. 
Anyway, I don't want to ruin the whole video. Go watch it. It's on YouTube. Literally just type in that and you'll find it. But I just wanted to unlock sleep paralysis for you guys because if you're like me, you're terrified of it. And I literally thought I was going to die in my sleep one day. Fear can kill. But when you realize that a lot of these things they portray in the media to be demonic, just like they portray things that are the divine feminine or magic to be demonic, once you realize that there's like, that's just a word and a label and these things are gifts and they have like multi-dimensional aspects and meanings and mystical properties. Like we live in a world of magic, guys. Of course no one wants you to know that. Then it's hard to keep control of anyone. But once you know that, your world will unlock. Like start questioning what you've been taught and what you believe and where the fear comes from. And you will unlock a magical world. Astral projection lucid dreaming and remote viewing and controlling part of your reality because there's something that also controls back which i'll talk about another time it's called plasma <laughs> those of you who know know but yeah like there's good and bad but then there's above that where there's like a rainbow or gray or both there's stuff above good and evil guys like there's a reason we're all like oh good oh evil well guess what what about like multi-dimensional interdimensional magic I bet they don't want that mainstream. I'm being so conspiracy. I'm like, they. But seriously, empower yourself. Start asking questions. Get curious. I'm done. Love you. Bye. All right. What are your thoughts on sleep paralysis and uh, astral projecting and also sleepwalking? Uh, this is just a deep dive. Uh, part one of the this series of demonic entities sleep paralysis uh portals dimensional shifts you name it this is the frequency part of the hfc podcast we have been doing a lot of chaos now we're going to be diving into the frequencies of things the spirituality of this world all right thank you again for being here with me today um if you have not subbed up go ahead and sub up you can always change your mind at a later time and thank you for those of you who are supportive, who watch these videos. I thought for years I am just speaking to dead space, but some of you actually like me. So uh, welcome to the HFC family. As always, stay safe, stay blessed in these dark, deceptive times. HFC out. Peace.